Hey everybody, happy Monday. Happy Monday everyone. In this video, back by popular demand, it's the replacements part two. In the original video, we talked about some fish that might present some challenges and some better alternatives. In this video, we're doing the same thing, but we've got a whole new list of fish, some fish that can be problematic and some better choices for a lot of people. So what do we have? Well, what if you want the electric blue Jack Dempsey? If you have never seen the electric blue Jack Dempsey, well, it's a sight to behold. These fish are often found at the pet store. They're often pretty expensive. I've seen electric blue Jack Dempsey's at about two and a half to three inches, easily going for 40 to $50. At least they were a couple years ago. The price has gone down a little bit. These are amazing looking fish but they do have some inherent issues. Number one, they're aggressive because they're Jack Dempsey's. Number two, if they were to theoretically grow to maximum size, they can get pretty big. They love to dig. <laughs> A better alternative might be the electric blue Acara. These are awesome fish. And by the way, we're gonna have species profiles on a lot of the fish that we talk about today. Check out the description below. The electric blue Acara stays a little bit smaller. For a cichlid, it is a relatively peaceful fish. And most importantly, they don't have the genetic issues that a lot of the electric blue jack Dempsey's have. I have never personally been able to grow an electric blue jack Dempsey past about two and a half to three inches before they start looking like the most horrific thing you've ever seen with bent spines and all kinds of crazy things and just yeah. eventually dying out. I don't think a lot of the electric blue jack Dempsey's are particularly strong genetically, where those problems don't tend to exist with the electric blue Acara. All right, our second replacement say, I want a bala shark. Bala sharks are cool. We've had them in the fish room before. We did a species profile on them. It was also a big mistake on our part. <laughs> Bala sharks are great because you get that really silvery color. And after all, they're called a shark and they get the black lines to the fins. A better solution is the rose line shark. Let me explain why. Bala sharks get big, really big, usually full grown anywhere between 12 and 14 inches. And yes, I have seen bala sharks every bit 14 inches. Not only that, these fish like to be kept in large groups. So now you've got a 14 inch fish that needs to be kept in a large group. And oh, by the way, they're also extremely active. They are in constant motion. Not only that, they tend to have a relatively big appetite, eat very quickly, and sometimes they can be a bit aggressive. A better solution for most people who have tanks that are not many, many, many hundreds of gallons is the rose line shark. One, in my opinion, they look better. They have a lot more color. They get a lot of nice red to them. They're gonna stay smaller, usually in most aquariums, maxing out right around six inches or so. They're still gonna to need to be kept in groups, but they're not gonna present all the other issues in terms of having a massive tank. If I were keeping ballast sharks at this point, I would want nothing less than probably a minimum of a 300 gallon tank, but most likely a 10 foot tank to really give them the space that they need to be in the group that they need to be in. So, rose line shark over the ballast shark. For the next one, let's pick something a little bit maybe smaller on the bottom of the tank, usually. How about you really want nearite snails? Nearite snails are cool. They are. They have a lot of awesome color. I love the patterns on the nearite snails. Yeah. They often do a good job of eating algae, but they do have a couple drawbacks. So instead of a nearite snail, you, you could consider a mystery snail. We actually did a video where we compared the two in much greater detail, but the nearite snails have a couple drawbacks. One is they tend not to be as active as a mystery snail. And two, the female nearite snails tend to leave those little white hard eggs all along the tank and the driftwood and the glass. And I have yet to find fish that really like to eat those eggs. So you wind up scraping off these little white specks all over your glass. It's not the end of the world. They're not all that horribly visible. It's not like a complete eyesore, but you will notice them. And the mystery snails aren't going to do that. Now the downside or the upside is the mystery snails will breed in fresh water where the nearite snails will not. So if you want more snails, you could potentially breed the mystery snails. And if you don't want more snails, all you have to do is pull the egg clutch out of the tank and you won't have them anyway. So if you want a snail, but don't necessarily want those little white eggs or you want something a little bit more active, check out the mystery snail instead of the nearite. 
For our next option, and this one is near and dear to my heart, what if you really want German Blue Rams? German Blue Rams are cool. A better option for a lot of people, however, might be the Bolivian Ram. Now, here's the reason why. The German Blue Rams do great if you're going to be keeping your water temperatures up around 80 degrees, and they really like that, that warmer water. They're also really nice if you've got water that is around a pH of 7 or below, and you have low water hardness. When you start getting into slightly higher pHs and slightly higher water hardness, and you want to keep your temperatures right around your typical 76 to 78 degrees, the Bolivian Ram is often the much wiser choice because you're going to have less issues later on down the road. Still a very beautiful looking fish, the Bolivian Ram is. Doesn't have quite the color of the German Blue Ram. I'll grant you that, but you'll probably get more years of enjoyment from that Ram. Now for our next option, let's go a little bit larger. Let's look at the tin foil barb, if you really want a tin foil barb. Tin foil barbs are cool, but again, just like the ballast sharks, they, they have all the same issues. A better choice for a lot of people may be the filamentosis barb. Tin foil barbs, again, they can get huge. I've seen tin foil barbs anywhere from 13 to 15 inches. It's also an extremely long commitment. These fish can live for 15 to 20 years. They are incredibly active. They get large, like I mentioned. Again, they're super aggressive eaters. This is another fish like the ballast shark where you are going to need at least an eight foot tank, ideally much larger, because again, this is a fish that wants to be kept in groups. If you're looking for a fish that's gonna give you some action that might fit in with a nice semi-aggressive South Central American tank, the filamentosis barb is gonna stay small. It's gonna to top out right around four inches, have more color, still give you that active personality, but be a lot easier to manage. Now, if you're in the aquarium hobby, especially for a while, chances are at some point, and you like larger fish, you will appreciate or maybe even want piranha. It's one of those <laughs> things a lot of fish keepers go through. It, it, maybe it's a phase, maybe you love them and that's cool. If you like piranhas, a better option might be the silver dollar. Yes, I know they are different fish, but trust me, piranha requires some special care. One, and I don't think a lot of people realize this, when you keep piranha, they are not terribly active, especially as they get older. They tend to just kind of stay in one place. They do need to be kept in groups. They can be very skittish. And so if you walk by the tank too fast, if you bump the glass, if the lights are on too bright or when the lights first come on, they tend to freak out a little bit that can cause injury to themselves and other fish. Of course, what you're feeding the piranha, it's gonna take a lot more tank maintenance because if you're feeding them meaty foods or potentially live fish, that's gonna re require more frequent water changes. The nice thing about the silver dollars is you're still getting that silver fish. You're still getting a fish that is gonna be relatively decent sized, but maybe not quite as large as the piranha. You're getting a fish that likes to eat a lot of vegetable matter. It's gonna be a little bit easier to maintain your fish tanks with the silver dollar. You don't have to worry about the aggression as much towards one another or other fish. And they're just a lot more friendly and you can keep them with a lot of other different types of fish. They tend to be more active. And again, it's not one of those things where, okay, I've got the piranha. I've had them in a tank now for five or six years. I'm getting tired of just watching them sit there. I'd like to change things out. And you really now have to try to figure out who's gonna take your piranha. Where with the silver dollars, you can just add other fish to the tank not have to worry about potential aggression issues. Now the last replacement on this list is one that I have asked you for a number of times. And what do I always say? No. Okay. The Chinese algae eater. Chinese algae eaters are cool. They come in a different varieties. They have the brown ones. And when they're young, they are really cute because they have the light tan and they get that darker stripe. They also have the gold algae eaters, Chinese yeah. algae eaters, and those are really pretty. A better option for most people is going to be the bristlenose pleco. Here's why. One, Chinese algae eaters start out cute at that little one, one and a half inch fish that you see at the pest store, and they can get seven to eight inches. We've had them in our fish room before. Usually the Chinese algae eaters are in with fairly aggressive Central South American cichlids, even African cichlids. These fish, they get large. They tend to be very aggressive towards one another and potentially towards other fish. And to top it all off, those Chinese algae eaters that really do an amazing job of eating algae when they're younger, as they get older, they become more scavenger-like and don't do a whole lot of algae eating at all. 
On the flip side, the bristlenose pleco maxes out at around six inches, so it's not gonna get quite as long, but it will be more wide-bodied. They're typically not as aggressive, and at least in our experience, one of the reasons why the fish tanks that you see throughout our fish room tend to have very little algae is we have bristlenose plecos in most of the tanks where the tanks are large enough for them, which is pretty much a 20 gallon and above, they're the ones doing the work. They're the ones that you see throughout our fish room that are keeping the glass clean. Yes, they will eat algae even when they get older if there is competition for food in the tank, understanding that you cannot necessarily just rely on them to eat all the algae. That might not be enough food for a full grown bristlenose or a Chinese algae eater. You do have to feed them, but the point is the bristlenose pleco, it's going to be less aggressive. It's gonna be easier to care for. There are really a lot of really cool varieties, long fin, short fin, blue-eyed standards, super reds, green dragons, your albinos, so many cool options. It is a much better option for most people. So we hope you enjoyed this, this latest edition of replacements. I think it's really fun, especially since a lot of a lot of these fish are just, they just don't work out, work out for a lot of people. Um, hopefully these give you some options of things that you can consider uh, for your tanks. Thank you so much for being here. Again, we got a lot of species profiles in the description below. If you want to learn more information, we'll see you in the next one.